In a hypothetical scenario where Russia wins the war against Ukraine, Putin might set his sights on taking over the rest of the Eurasian steppe in northeastern Europe. This would involve launching an offensive against NATO. Worse yet, European powers might have to fight against Russia without support from the US, NATO's largest military contributor. But why would the US ever consider leaving NATO, and how likely is this scenario? Let's get into it. According to reports by Bild and Business Insider, the German military is already planning for an unlikely Russian invasion of Europe in 2025. According to leaked military documentation, Russia will begin the assault technologically, launching coordinated cyber attacks on the countries closest to its borders – Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. The goal of these attacks would be to incite tension and distract from any Russian military movements in the region. The Baltic countries are the most vulnerable to being invaded by Russia. Nestled between Russia's mainland in the east, the country's close ally Belarus in the south, and a Russian military base exclave of Kaliningrad to the southeast. The only ground support these states would be able to receive from NATO is via the narrow Sawalki Gap between Poland and Lithuania. This 62-mile stretch of sparsely populated land on the borders of these two countries would likely be one of the first military objectives in a hypothetical Russo-NATO war. The stretch is a vital point of interest for all NATO countries and has been the subject of increasing military action since the worsening of Russia-NATO relations in early 2010. However, the NATO-Russia Founding Act of 1997 prohibited NATO from creating permanent military bases in the region around the gap. At the time, most Eastern countries sought to normalize relations with Russia, which was suffering economically at the time, making a base only likely to escalate matters in the wrong direction. As is, the act has now left the Baltic countries increasingly defenseless, as Belarus positioned itself as one of Russia's staunchest allies in Europe. Additionally, it allows Russia to freely move military equipment across Belarus territory. If Russia could free itself from the war in Ukraine, it could move the bulk of its tank forces across Belarus and cut off the Baltic countries by invading the Sawalki Gap. Then NATO would be forced to tunnel its ground forces into the gap to gain access to the Baltic and prevent further incursions. Vladimir Putin himself said in December 2023 that claims that Russia would go to war against NATO were complete nonsense, but many European leaders have commented that the move wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility especially considering Russia's hostile history with Ukraine and the annexation of Crimea in 2014. Some strategists suggest that the annexation effectively annulled the 1997 Founding Act, which wasn't a legally binding document to begin with, asking NATO to establish a permanent foothold in the Baltic and reinforce its defensive position. According to DGAP, German Council of Foreign Relations, conflict between Russia and NATO has been brewing for over two decades, and it's only a matter of time before Russia invades in one way or another. The report states that Russia has long sought to restore its imperialistic expanse in Europe, aiming to take back all territories lost by breaking up the Soviet Union, to which the Baltic states belonged. This is further bolstered by the fact that Belarus is so diplomatically and ideologically close to Moscow that some news outlets claim that Russia has annexed the country back into the Federation. DGAP further states that Russia has enacted a provision in its constitution that allows Belarus to return and is currently implementing it. The biggest contributor to NATO's hesitance to openly confront Russia is its frequent threats of using nuclear weapons. For example, one of the primary reasons NATO delayed sending F-16s to Ukraine was because the Russian Ministry of Defense claimed this was presenting a nuclear threat to Russia. The excuse was that F-16s could theoretically carry and launch nuclear weapons, prompting Russia to launch their weapons in turn. Ultimately, NATO called Putin's bluff and started sending old F-15 planes to Ukraine in late 2023 where they are currently being used for training purposes before being put to service later in 2024. However, even with renewed war efforts by Ukraine and bolstered weaponry and equipment through F-16s and advanced missiles they can carry, some reports suggest that may not be enough. According to Reuters, Russia's planned military defense budget for 2024 is roughly $110 billion, a third of its total budget. This would put Russia above the US in military spending for the year compared to its total GDP. While Russia has certainly taken a beating, with collective losses surpassing 300,000 people, the budget indicates that Russia could feasibly conscript and train 280,000 soldiers each year. Even in the hypothetical scenario outlined at the beginning of the video, Russia would have more soldiers than it had at the beginning of the 2022 invasion. 
Some conservative estimates suggest that the war would begin in 6 to 10 years, giving Russia anywhere between 1.7 to 2.8 million troops to throw at the front lines. Worse yet, these new recruits are likely to be put into service in Ukraine, gaining valuable experience for the upcoming fight against NATO, which uses similar weapons and tactics. Furthermore, Russia claims to have the capacity to build 100 tanks per year. While these are unlikely to be fully new tanks, and many are expected to be refurbished Soviet-era pieces with modernized equipment, Russia could assemble a monumental force to bear upon NATO's most vulnerable choke point. But why is the US taken out of the equation? Well, the primary reason behind the German plans is the US presidential elections in 2024. While Biden's administration has supported NATO efforts so far, many analysts claim that the tide is turning. Biden's most likely opponent in the elections will be Donald Trump. According to the pre-election reports, Trump has a 0.6% margin in his favor, which would make him the favorite to win the election. But keep in mind that the election is still a few months away as of the writing of this video. Unlike Biden, Trump's foreign policy has been unequivocally America first. In his past meetings with Putin during his presidency, Trump has expressed willingness to cooperate with Russia. While his opinion of Russia may have changed, this is unlikely. Trump has also famously claimed that he could end the war in 24 hours, but refused to elaborate on the exact logistics behind this bold plan. He did, however, claim that both Russia and Ukraine would gain heavily in the ensuing agreement. Additionally, Trump's stance on NATO has also been more negative than Biden's. In one interview, Trump claimed that European countries weren't contributing proportionally, leaving the US to overspend on sending financial and military aid to Ukraine. If Trump were to get re-elected to office in 2024, it's highly likely that he would force his administration to cut off the military supplies to Ukraine altogether. This would leave Ukraine at the mercy of other European countries, which only have a fraction of the military spending power of the US. Trump even famously tried to make the US leave NATO in 2018 during his first presidential term. At the time, his efforts were thwarted by his closest advisors. According to them, this might no longer be a possibility. Most of his allies that had differing views on NATO, i.e. positive ones, are unlikely to become a part of his cabinet should he win the 2024 elections. That means he's likely to ally himself with pro-American advisors who might share the same view that NATO is a budgetary concern. According to John Bolton, former national security advisor, the damage in the second term would be irreparable. Trump doesn't exactly have a clear way to victory though, and has amassed 34 legal charges between his presidency and today. Many of the charges are considered felonies and could result in a lengthy jail sentence. However, Trump has famously pushed back on all the charges, and most of them might not even reach trial in 2024, making them unlikely to affect the election. Only time will tell how this story ends. Even if Trump does get re-elected and pushes for the US to withdraw from NATO, there is still a roadblock that he might not be able to overcome. A bill introduced to Congress in late 2023 prohibits US presidents from leaving NATO without an act of Congress or two-thirds approval from the Senate. This is in stark contrast to many other Senate approvals, which require a simple majority to pass. But what does NATO say on the matter? According to NATO, Article 13 states that any party, i.e. a member state, can leave NATO if they provide a denunciation to the US government, with a withdrawal period of one year. In effect, a country only has to contact the US government and say that it wants to leave NATO, and the US will distribute the notice to other members and wait for a year before ratifying it. Based on that, even if Trump managed to pass a withdrawal vote, it wouldn't come into effect for another year after that, not until at least 2026. That means that Russia most likely won't make any offensive moves before then. Additionally, Putin would likely wait until the US formally declares that it's leaving NATO, if indeed that happens. If the US remains a NATO member, there are a few other scenarios to consider. Russia's future war against Europe might not go anywhere, largely due to NATO's Article 5, which states that an attack on one member of the NATO alliance is considered an attack on all of them. However, if Trump declares that they won't send adequate assistance to other member states, even with Article 5 in effect, it might create a precedent for other members to do so as well. It would obliterate the meaning of collective defense that stands at the core of NATO when it was founded in 1949. Before long, NATO would lose most of its intended purpose and European countries would be left practically alone and forced to create makeshift alliances against Russia. In this hypothetical scenario, Ukraine would likely be doomed. Without America's assistance to the rest of NATO, most members would stop their financial and military aid to Ukraine. They would be forced to re-evaluate budgets and would likely expect a Russian invasion with more certainty than before. 
the Ukrainian military could run out of ammunition, an undeniably key component of waging war in the 21st century. Russia could gain a larger foothold around Ukraine, being able to reach Polish and Romanian supply hubs. If Putin destroys these, Ukraine would likely fold without military assistance. If that were to happen, Putin would look toward Europe as his next conquest. Without US support, NATO members would either present a united front, or each country would wage independent wars with Russia once it comes knocking on the doorstep. How well would they fare? Central Europe has only two true contenders for waging an extended and uncertain war against Russia, Poland and Germany. Poland has learned from its bitter experiences with Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union in the 20th century. It's adopted a more militant stance and re-established itself as one of the most conservative powers in Europe. The events of the Russo-Ukrainian conflict have only reinforced Poland as a Ukrainian ally. Additionally, the country has called for NATO to reinforce its eastern border and prevent Russia from gaining any type of foothold. NATO did answer the call and put 40,000 troops in reserve on short notice from the Netherlands, with plans to expand the response force to 300,000 troops. If Poland or Lithuania were invaded to cut off the Baltic from the rest of NATO, the response force would likely be one of the first to take up arms. But Poland also has its own military with extensive plans for modernization and upgrades over the coming decade. Currently, the Polish army has around 200,000 active troops, but Warsaw has plans to expand that to 300,000, which would be a level comparable to Russian active troops before the invasion. Additionally, the country has a much more positive attitude toward defending its borders. One of its initiatives is a territorial defense force set up in 2017, consisting of weekend soldiers who take occasional refresher lessons. While this approach might seem dubious, it has been reinforced after the Russian invasion of Ukraine as danger started to loom over Poland as well. While Poland clashed with the rest of Europe politically, particularly in regards to how it handles migration and is exhibiting internal strife, the country is united in the efforts to bolster its military. Its budget for 2023 outlined that it would double its military spending to 5% of its GDP. As a result, Poland would likely become one of the best-equipped nations in Europe after Russia. While Poland sent 240 Soviet-era tanks to Ukraine as part of its military aid, it has signed a deal to receive 250 modern Abrams tanks from the US in turn, going a long way towards modernizing its land forces. The US is also sending F-35 fighters to Poland, 32 of them, and the country already has a stockpile of F-16s that it's not parting with anytime soon, unlike the Netherlands and Denmark, which are sending theirs to Ukraine. Additionally, the country has turned to South Korea for major equipment purchases, including the confirmed 180 K-2 Black Panther tanks, 200 K-9 Thunder Howitzers, 48 F-A-50 light attack aircraft, and 218 K-239 Chunmu rocket launchers. The deal is expected to exceed over 1,000 tanks and 600 artillery pieces, giving Poland nearly unrivaled military power in Central Europe. Some analysts suggested that Russia isn't putting a concerted effort into Ukraine, only using its Soviet-era weaponry to try and beat other Soviet-era weaponry fielded by Ukrainians. However, if Russia decided to mount an offensive against NATO proper, it would face an opponent that uses modern weapons, armor, and aircraft, likely demanding full attention unless Putin wants yet another war of attrition. If Poland is Europe's first line of defense, then Germany is its second. While the country has historically shunned fielding a large military after World War II, recent developments have made German politicians rethink that stance. Most of the German forces were focused on assisting NATO missions abroad. This has led to the country heavily undersupplying its military and not leaving much of a budget for defense. This has changed with the invasion of Ukraine. According to the announcement from the German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, only three days after the invasion began, Germany would input roughly 33% more budget into national defense, to a total of 2% of its GDP, giving it the seventh highest military defense budget in the world. By comparison, even with the boosts in spending, Poland ranks 14th. Nominally, all NATO members should spend 2% of its GDP per year on defense, but only half actually do. While the Chancellor's speech garnered generous applause in the German parliament, the truth is that the budget for the German military is still to create meaningful changes. By 2023, none of the emergency $100 billion funds that were promised were paid out, so Germany's progress on that front is much slower than that of Poland. Similarly, the country only has 180,000 active duty troops and no real plan to boost that number above 200,000 anytime soon. 
In a report on how bad the state of the German military is, Germany's defense minister, Boris Pistorius, has said that he might allow residents without citizenship to join the military and get a German passport in return. There's no doubt that the country's dubious history during the world wars has created a national anti-war sentiment that echoes deeply. This is in stark contrast to the Poles, who seem to embrace the need for a military with more direct spending and outfitting. What Germany does have, though, is a much more robust economy. In a potential war against Russia, where NATO doesn't have US backing, Germany would be its biggest economy, followed by the UK, France and Italy. While Germany would probably respond to Article 5 of NATO being triggered with its military, it would also likely support Poland and the Baltic countries financially, much like it has done so far with Ukraine. Additionally, going back to the reports from the beginning of the video, Germany seems to be well aware of the threat that Russia is posing to the security of the entire continent. To that end, Germany's policies can go in a few directions. The first is to try and support Ukraine as much as possible, to buy Germany and other NATO members more time to create a sufficient military force. So long as Russia remains embroiled in war with Ukraine, it's unlikely to start another war in a similar area. It would spread Russia's forces too thin, potentially leaving it open for an invasion for China, which has been brewing for decades over Outer Manchuria and the Greater Siberian Far East. Germany is also one of the key voting members in NATO and might influence other nations in the attempt to integrate Ukraine into NATO quicker, giving Russia a deterrent against continuing the war. Secondly, Germany may try to bolster its US relations. Even if Trump gets elected as president, a closer connection between Germany and the US than between Russia and the US might mean that the US would come to the defense of NATO regardless. Alternatively, it might try to at least dissuade Russia against starting another war, since Trump's main concern with NATO is that it's a significant burden on the American economy, Germany and the other top 10 economies that are part of NATO could start contributing more to the shared defenses. This could alleviate some of the issues he has with the pact, which might make him more amenable to staying. Third, Germany can try to exert more economic pressure on Russia. While the previous sanctions have ultimately been considered failures, Germany and the rest of Europe still maintain some trade with Russia. If the countries decided to look into alternative sources of goods, it could create a big enough hole in Russia's budget to make it worry. Considering that China's deal with Russia might not be nearly as lucrative, Russia has been selling oil and gas at highly reduced prices to China to get much-needed funding, it may be in Russia's best interest to keep the trade deals it has as is and remain in Europe's graces. Even if Germany fails in its plan to deter Russia from starting more wars on European soil, the US might not be able to afford not to get involved in it anyway. If whoever gets elected manages to persuade the Senate to withdraw from NATO, it could set a dangerous precedent for the rest of the world. American policy would likely turn completely inward. Suddenly, global geopolitics would take a complete turn. The decades-long defense of Taiwan against mainland China might be completely pointless. The ongoing Israeli-Palestinian conflict might play out much differently if the US withdraws its navy from the Red Sea and Strait of Hormuz. Without US support, the geopolitics of the entire world might change in favor of China and Russia, as well as countries backed by them. The American economy could also retreat inward, which would go against the country's globalization efforts, especially considering that its success as a superpower on its own depends on active trade and economic flow. If this were to happen, the US would be in an unfavorable position where it would have to maintain a close balance on its external influence through military, economics and politics. No matter what happens, the impetus is on European leaders to make a concerted effort both to bolster their country's national defenses as well as to more meaningfully help Ukraine. Europe as a whole could more than likely take on Russia and win, solely due to having larger combined economies, militaries and industries. However, Russia has obviously been preparing for something big for a reason. If NATO doesn't equip Ukraine with enough firepower to mount a longer defensive effort, it won't have enough time to bring sweeping changes to NATO's military structure and equipment to counter Russia's offensive. In the end, NATO's success, while almost certain, hinges on its ability to unify people of many nations and inspire hope in Ukraine. But what do you think? Is Putin preparing for a war against NATO? Will the US leave NATO behind and focus on its own efforts? And how will this development affect the relations between China, Russia, and the US? Let us know what you think in the comments below, and thanks for watching the video. Now go and check out how NATO will respond to a Russian attack, or click this other video instead.